So that's a way to do it. The only downside of this way is that you do not control which IP address is gotten by which WISM. So which service port is getting which IP address. You know that the first WISM is going to get one, the second WISM is going to get another one, and it could be any IP address in the range you allow. So that doesn't give you a lot of control on which one is, is gotten by which. So there is a second sub way in the um, DHCP mode, uh, which is instead of just creating a basic uh, DHCP scope, you allocate an IP address to a specific host. Let me show you what I mean here. So I'm going to delete uh, with service. I'm deleting that, sp that pool here so I, I cancel it. And I want to allocate one IP address to uh, my um, first WISM and another IP address to my second WISM. I know that the first service interface is going to come on that port. And I know that the second service interface is going to come on that port here. So what I can do is to do a reservation. So I set up one specific scope for a specific MAC address. So if I say show MAC address um, on my oops, do show MAC address of course. On my switch here, and I check which MAC address is gotten on which port. You see that I do not see what MAC address is on those two ports, and the reason why is because there is no communication yet. Once again, so you cannot get that from the CAT65. But you have a console to your WISMs. So if you go to your WISM here and you say show interface detailed uh, for service port you see it's going to give you the MAC address here. So that's the MAC address of my first service port on my first switch. OK, I can copy that and go back to here and create a reservation for that MAC address. So the way this is done, it's exactly like a normal scope, IP, DHCP, uh, pool. I'm going to call it WISM1. Um, and instead of just giving the network, you define what is the IP address of the host that you want to give. So host, and you say, for example, 192.168.10.3.255.255.255.0. So that's the IP address I want to get to that guy. Which guy? Well, that's the second line, hardware address. And you give the MAC address of the host you want to give this IP address to. So I say paste here. But this is going to fail if I leave it like that. The way the address is supposed to be given is by groups with a dot here. Like this, here. So that's the correct format. All right, my first host is down. Exit. So I'm going to do the second one. So IP DHCP pool wisdom 2. Host is going to be 192.168.10.4, for example, 255.255.255.0. Hardware address, well, I'll need to check that up here. I'm going to my second WISM and show interface detailed service interface. And I'm seeing that that's the MAC address. Alrighty, copy and paste back here. And same treatment, I need to change it a little bit to make it cleaner. All right. And you see, we have many other options here. So you can also set default routers and 192.168.10.1. You would do that, right? In the lab, I don't really care. But in a real uh, scenario, you want to give the IP address and probably the gateway for that guy, although it's not going to use it very much. But you know, you can, you can configure many options. OK, so that's fine. I have my second and a half option. So remember, static IP address, you go to the WISM and you configure the IP address manually. Second option, you configure the DHCP scope and you let your service ports on each WISM get um, IP address in the scope randomly somehow, whatever the IP address they get, doesn't matter. Or if you want to force a specific IP address, instead of setting a general DHCP scope, you set up a specific scope like we do here. So from all the three cases, the last step for you is to tell the CAT65 that the WISM service interface is going to be in that VLAN. And that's a command that is set with the WISM family of commands. So you say WISM service VLAN 182. So there you're telling your CAT65 that this VLAN is used to communicate between the CAT65 and the WISMs.
Okay, so that command you need it whichever way you use to configure the IP address on the service interface static, DHCP with a reserved a reservation or, or general scope in all cases you need that command okay that should take care of the communication between the WISM and the CAT65 as far as backplane is concerned the second step is to configure the uh, data part here there is a difference between the old codes and the new codes on the CAT65 uh, long ago, you could configure the uh, a lag manually, so you would configure an ether channel port basically on the CAT65 and you would allocate the physical port 1 to 4, uh, like in our example here, to that lag, to that um, uh, ether channel. With the new code uh, from 12.2.18 SXF5, there are some shortcuts that have been created. My suggestion is to always, always use those shortcuts. Never use the manual way if you have a new code of course and if you are in the lab. And the reason why is because those commands have been set so that you don't make mistakes. So guess what? Don't make mistakes. Actually there are several papers that seem to show that if you do the command manually you can very easily create a conflict between this manual setting and the automatic setting that you can use also to you know fine-tune this this lag so mixing them is a very bad idea so my suggestion is to always stick to the automatic way so how do you know if the iOS you have is creating those interfaces automatically well an easy way to check is to check the interfaces on the switch So here I have a couple of interfaces, of course I have a module 3 which is quite taking a lot of, uh, of space. And you see you have those port channel interfaces that are created automatically. This has a very high number, you cannot create those two manually. Conf T, interface, uh, port channel. Now uh, let's say uh, 299, just for fun. You can say what? You can't get that number. And if I say question mark, it tells me Oh, you know what? It's from 1 to 256. Uh, you cannot go that high. So that means that these two interfaces were created automatically. So if they were created automatically, it's because you have this new iOS that detects those uh, interfaces and creates the lag automatically. So the only thing you really need to do here is to allocate, activate the support channel by allocating some parameters to this interface. Um, and this is again um, something that can be done with the WISM command. So in my case, my WISM here has a management IP address I want to set in VLAN 2100 and the IP address is going to be 172.16.16 something. Okay, fair enough. So as I'm a good guy, I'm going to create first an interface on my CAT65 to be able to uh, have a, an IP address in that subnet on the CAT that will be used probably as a gateway or router for, for the WISM on the data part. So VLAN 2100 first off and then the magic interface interface VLAN 2100 IP address 172.16.16.1255.255.255.0 I like the example of 2100 because as you can see here um, I have a message here saying oh fail to create VLAN 2100 spanning tree extend system ID needs to be enabled what it says is that you cannot create more than 1,000 uh, and something um, uh, VLANs on the normal switch. You need to extend the system. So on the uh, lower platforms, you can extend it automatically or put the switch in VTP mode transparent. In the CAT65, well, it tells you what it wants. It says you have to use extend system ID. All right, fair enough. So you go back to ConfT and you say spanning tree extend system ID just do what it says here we go so now if I do that if I recreate 2100 VLAN it should take it alright and you see it doesn't complain anymore so just to be on the, f on the safe side I can recreate my interface although it should have kept it but just for fun so here my switch side is ready so I have an IP address in the right subnet matching my WISM management site and what I need to do is to set the lag on the CAT65 to communicate with that management interface. 